PT <laughs> FC What is going on guys? I'm your LS of This Week in MLS and welcome to the first ever episode of the This Week in MLS show on YouTube. Eventually, we will get it as a podcast. Uh, just give your boys some time. Anyways, I am joined by one of my closest friends in the MLS community and with, and he was just an obvious first option for this first episode. Oh. Jerry Reynoso of the One Ten Football Show. Jerry, how are you doing? Oh man, what an intro, bro. That's probably the best intro I had in a long time, man. I'm good, dude. I miss doing these kind of podcasts with friends like you and, and just talking about MLS and football in general, dude. So I'm excited. This is a great way to kick off this preseason, dude. Yeah, and obviously you and I didn't have the best day with Man United tying again nil-nil to yeah. a six club, but it is what it is. Anyways, just a warning for the show for you viewers out there. Do not take us 100% seriously because that oh, is yeah. where you go wrong. In this series, we will be doing random segments. We got memes of the week. We have player interviews, and those player interviews should also not be taken seriously at all. But let's get right into it. The way we are going to start off every show is with our weekly news briefing. Let's start off with Thierry Henry, who just left Club de Foot, the Montreal team. And I, I, I hate it. Um, I, I'm sad, and I love Thierry Henry, but I understand it. I mean, who would want to manage a team? that says Club de Foot in the name. I mean, the impact was just such a great name. But no, obviously he left for family reasons. Jerry, how do you feel about this? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't impact us as much as the club, but uh, you got to accept that on a human level. I mean, any decision that is made based on family is already the best decisions to go with. Uh, good thing is that Montreal is already looking for their next head coach. Um, maybe you could think of Connor Casey coming in and filling that Ooh. spot in. I was also thinking uh, Colo Torre, who's back uh, assistant manager for Brendan Rodgers over at Leicester City, or we can have a Patrick Vieira reunion in the MLS. Yeah, NYCFC fans are punching the air right now with you saying Vieira. Yeah, I would be too. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just sad to me because so many players signed with Montreal with the hopes of working with Thierry Henry. Georgi Mihalovic literally joined Montreal because Thierry Henry called him to, and now he's not there. And I like the fact that he said kids and didn't even mention his wife at all. He said, I miss my kids. Ooh. I was like, what's up with the wife? What's going on, man? Man, Terry, Anyways. he's down bad with that. He's already. down bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's stick with Montreal here. And also just a player who was, we've seen with our own eyes leave because of family reasons, a club. Laurent Simon, he's actually joining Montreal as an assistant coach, which basically means he's no longer playing, which makes me sad. But uh, what do you make of this, Jerry? Oh, man. I mean, he's given us a lot of memories over here in Los Angeles uh, with, you know, the inaugural season for LAFC. Um, but, you know, assistant coach, that's a step up for him. He's put, he's put away the boots and he's ready to take on the, the pen and paper. That's, <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> well, Simon is not the oldest center back on Montreal. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, Rod Manny is still in MLS and he is still on Montreal and he is still a starter My for goodness, bro. Club de Foot which is how just, is oh my God. how is he still alive <laughs> Anyways, uh get your uh tissues man because this next one's gonna hurt ah <sighs> let's bring it on sacramento man burke the owner drops out and sacramento republic is in shambles right now because they need a new owner in order to remain an mls expansion team in 2023 I know you have a personal affiliation with Sac Republic. Just let it all out, man. I'm here for you. I mean, it hurts, bro. Sacramento. I, I grew up, uh, you know, attending their matches in the US, USL. And, you know, that fan base wants it bad. And then you have some random guy named Burke. I, I don't even know who he is. Some guy named Burke. He just pulls up and says, hey, I, I, got, I got money. I got this money. And I, I want to make you guys' dreams come true. And then when it's about to happen, he's like, hey, yo, I'm just playing. And so he just leaves. And then it's like, all right, who? What's going to go on now? And so I think it would be really cool 
you know, but obviously it's not England. Um, but Sacramento, if there's any club that can be fan led, it could be Sacramento. You know, the supporters could run this club. They already ready to go. Good news is, is that MLS is still working with the mayor of the city to keep their expansion hopes alive. They just need to find a new owner. Um, okay, whether like or not you hate Atlanta United or not, you have to be happy that Joseph Martinez will be back on the pitch come April 6th for the five stripes. This is very, very important. But the big question is always, for anybody that gets injured is, will he be the same striker, the same finisher that we're so used to seeing over the years? What do you think? I really hope so. And just just saying though, like when he's healthy, he is easily a top two player in Major League Soccer. I don't think that's disputed at all. And the league is just yeah. better with him than without him. So yes, like Atlanta United fans could be annoying at times. And I did drop a recent video about Atlanta United. So check that out. I'll probably do one of those like little show up things here. I don't know how that works yet. Now let's go into what could be a little bit of a debate, a debate that I kind of got involved with on in Twitter. So Efra Alvarez of the LA Galaxy, a big homegrown, he was named to the Olympic preliminary rosters for both the USMNT and El Tree. Jerry, who do you think he should choose? Uh, but if I'm Efrain, I mean, I'm, unfortunately, bro, I don't even think he's that good. That's the thing. So okay, that's like, so I'm glad we're on the same page. Here yeah, I don't I think he's that good, bro. Because because <laughs> I, I see when I heard this this news, everyone's like, "Oh, he's a top star." I'm like, "Dude, he hasn't done much, bro. I'm sorry, he ain't yeah. that good. He's like 18 years old, bro. He's still got a lot of time. Don't make it seem like who's he gonna choose. It's not LeBron going to Miami, bro. Come on, don't make it like that. So the thing with Efra Alvarez is like. I have a better diet than him, and I eat Popeyes maybe twice a week, Taco Bell maybe twice a week, hey, and like, good. I Taco Bell is good, and it's my guilty pleasure, and we don't need to talk about this right now. But Efra Alvarez, <laughs> the thing is that like everyone watches him play, and he'll make one quality pass, and the whole world is just like, oh my God, uh, sign it! Uh, he's going bro. to Madrid, he's going to Barca, just like every other. Exactly. Guy. Nowhere near the level of any of those guys. So yeah. he is the one USMNT potential guy that I want to go to L Tree because I don't think we need him. There is no depth or there's no space on the depth chart for him personally. I mean, if I was to compare him to another player, I'd compare him to Brian Rodriguez. And to be honest, I don't think that's a good comparison. I think right Rodriguez now. is miles ahead of him, even though he can't. Oh, play. yeah, but I'm talking about, yeah. about performance-wise and like yeah. statistics. Yeah, these guys are the exact same person. Segment that you named yourself today while we were going over the rundown. Let's get ready for Rate It or Hate It, where we talk about rumors and signings in the league, and we just say, do we rate it or do we hate it? So let's start off with one of the basic big names coming oh. to MLS. Javier Pastore to MLS. Jerry, rate it or hate it? Uh, but yeah, I think this is the next best thing. I mean, I see it very likely a player with this kind of caliber to make the switch to the U.S., but it always has to be in their liking, you know what I mean? They have to want to go, not just because it's a rumor. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they kind of want me there, I'm going to go. No, nah, dude, everybody's rumored. Eli, are you rumored to go sign for Galaxy, aren't you? Oh, yeah, no, no. I'm already, like, in the works for a DP contract. I'm the Pavone replacement. You know that, right? There but you go. The exactly. Story, right? but... The story, apparently, that's his his priority is to go to MLS or Qatar. I'm like, bruh, Qatar, really? You're going to you're gonna think about going to the Middle East instead of, like, that's playing? That's what I'm saying, bro. Actually, no, honestly, given the LA Galaxy situation, I'd probably rather go to the Middle East than play for the Galaxy. But, that's ooh. That's just such a, like, it's either, ML, it's either Premier League or fourth division in Sweden. It's like, that's the same thing. <laughs> and I found out actually is I don't even I don't know, know at this point. I don't make the names, matter. Bro. Um, I'd like yeah. to cut this one out and say hate it. Hate it. I'm going to go with hate it as well. In a little bit, we're actually going to go to a Joseph Martinez type player, in my opinion. But first, let's talk about Bruno Gasper, a right back from Sporting CP, big club in Portugal going to the Vancouver Whitecaps. The reason why I find this so funny and I rate it also, it is like officially going to happen is the fact that like Vancouver is one of the most desperate teams for talent, but they need attacking talent. Yet they invest all their money in fullbacks, getting gas. Wow. And of course they had Ali Adnan as a designated player who's honestly goaded in my opinion. And I love Ali Adnan, but like they're putting all their faith in these left backs. Like it's not like we're signing like Marcelo or like our boy Aaron Juan Bissaka here. Um, True. What do you think about Bruno Gasper coming to MLS? Well, I was doing some highlight watching and uh, picking my nose while I was doing that. But uh, I noticed that he was just like such a very patient back and he could flip the switch very easily and play aggressive with high intensity. But uh, 
another thing also I looked was that uh, he wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. So he's a he's a Kaku kind of player where he's gonna about to kick somebody in the face from the stands kind of guy. That's what I think. I think he has plenty to improve on, and Mark DeSantos might have a lot of fun playing around with this guy, whether it fits in the back line or maybe even convert this guy into a winger because he does have the pace. It's just. Yeah. A little bit of skill, a little bit of fundamentals that need some work on, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I rate it. Yeah, I, I I will rate it just because it's funny to me. Um, I'm sure he's a really good player, but just the fact that like Vancouver's going to invest all their money in fullbacks, exactly, like, that's like the last thought of every other MLS team. I love it. Um, so now let's go to that Joseph Martinez type of player. And this time, instead of saying rate it or hate it, I want you to pick one of these three teams for him to go to. We're talking about Rafael Santos Bore, who is a starter for River Plate. Do you rate this one, hate it? And which of these three teams, Toronto, NYC, or Minnesota, do you think he should go to? Oh man, is, is there like a middle section, bro? Cause I don't hate it or hate it. Um, uh, a lot of his goals I noticed aren't that pretty, but that's the best part is that they're just goals. You just need someone to put it in, you know, 90th minute. Get the ball in there. I don't care how you do it. If you want to ass hit it, do it. But I think it would be a lot of fun to see him either in uh, Minnesota or New York City. Uh, Toronto? Nah. Nah. nah I don't know. Bro, they Put got him. Io Akinola, and I just want him to, like, just run free next season. Um, yeah, I'm going to okay. go with Minnesota here because the only striker on the roster right now is Foster Langsdorf. Do you know who Foster Langsdorf is? Uh, some guy from Dr. Seuss? Yeah, exactly. No, no one does. Uh, no offense to him, but at the same time, it's like they need a striker badly. <laughs> I'm sorry, well, dude. We're getting close to wrapping up here. Let's talk about our meme of the week. Oh, so, yes. You and I know this human being well. I believe this oh. meme was sent in by Philadelphia Union Meme. But uh, Shion is our meme of the week. It's not just any Shion. It is thick boy Shion. Let's talk about this meme here. So it's an old photo of him and it says, Hey there, your team is S-word and they cannot compare to Seattle Sounders or Chelsea. So for those who don't know Shion, he's a big Sounder Chelsea fan. And if you've ever talked to him in the past, literally any team sucks if they're not those two teams. And he'll always predict those teams to win. And unfortunately, he's usually right. But what do you what do you think about this meme? It's been a while since I've seen Thick Shion. <laughs> and I just have him like staring at me right now. So it's like, what's up, bro? <laughs> Long time no see. Um, dude, this is completely facts. That guy will fight till the end just to make sure he's right. And even if he's wrong, he'll still feel like he's right. I don't know what's up with that guy's mind, but. Love you, Shia. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. this is all respect. And I think like just this photo in general can become a new meme format. So if you guys want to submit a meme of the week, I'm open to this being the meme of the week again, but come up with a new caption and just. Welcome back to the first episode of the This Week in MLS show. I am joined by the absolute tank, Tanner Tessman. Tanner, <laughs> are you fine with me calling you the tank? I mean, it just works with the name. That I mean, that works. Yeah, that works. <laughs> All right. Before we, we get into it, I just want to say thank you for choosing soccer over football. Unlike guys like Odell Beckham and Steve Nash, you are a real one. Um, however, I do know that you are Dabo Sweeney's godson. I have a very, very serious question to ask. Are you a master at dabbing? <laughs> That's a funny question. I guess I'm pretty good, but I don't know. Can we see it? I'll be the judge. Okay, okay, you know, just like a nice little dab. I like it, I like it. All right, yeah. anyways, <laughs> onto the soccer stuff. <laughs> so I looked at a bunch of photos of you from a few years ago and you were you were smaller, you were skinnier. And from a out of shape guy like me, how did you get so buff? Um, I guess it was really just uh, consistency of working out. Like even when I was like uh, skinnier, I guess I was skinny, but uh, I like to think of myself kind of big all the time, but um I, at those times i was i was going to the gym three times a week and I, since i was growing so much the the muscle that i was putting on like was just stretching and it didn't actually like make me look big but i was always strong so but not nah, just consistently going to the gym eating right makes you it makes you buff yeah so you obviously had an insane rookie season in 2020 and it kind of put you on the map for the u.s men's national team in general and you were just named to the preliminary roster for the olympics what would participating in the olympics mean for you oh it'd be amazing um that's just i mean growing up you watch the olympics and you you watch all these sports events you watch the winter olympics and it's like a family thing you go and watch it all the time it's, it's on when it's on and 
And um, it's a really special event. You hear about the, the Olympic Village and the, the people, the athletes that go there. So it's a really special thing, but I never grew up saying, you know, I want to be an Olympian. I want to, this is what I want to do. You know, it's more World Cup, Champions League, Europe, different type of things. But to have this in front of me now is an opportunity. Uh, it would be, it would be amazing to get on that roster and be a part of that group, so. Describe your skill set and why I should give you my rose to join the Olympic roster or just the USMNT pool. Um, I would say first and foremost, I'm a, I'm a good team player. I like to I like to make the players around me better and I like to encourage them to, to do well. And then secondly, I think I'm a presence in the midfield. Um, I like to control the game, get forward, uh, score some goals, but defend at the same time and, and help the team do whatever we need to do. And then I guess lastly, I work hard, whatever, I mean, whatever I need to do to, to help the team, I'll, I'll be there, so. Awesome. So there's obviously a big youth energy going on at FC Dallas. Tons of great homegrowns have been there the past few seasons. And instead of asking you like, oh, who do you think is the best one? I just want to know what like the energy is with you guys. What's the camaraderie like between the young guys? Tell me any funny stories you got. So um, we play a lot of, they play a lot of video games. I'm not a huge video game guy, but uh, we were playing uh, Mario Smash Bros. I think that's the game. Um, we were playing uh, FIFA, uh, different type of thing. It used to be Fortnite, but not really anymore. But uh, besides that, we'll play a bit of card games. We play poker, we play 12s. We play different things, have some fun. And then we're just chilling most of the time, so. You know, I was gonna ask you what childhood cartoon character you most identify with, but you know what? I wanna ask what Smash character you most identify with, with your personality or your skill set. Well, I mean, I only, I only played Smash Bros for uh, like a week when we were at preseason down in uh, in Miami or in, Flo in Florida somewhere. And the only character I would use was Sonic because Sonic was the easiest one to use. All you do is press one button and he spins and goes everywhere. So I was using Sonic. So I would have to say here for your question, I'd have to say Sonic. Maybe I don't relate to him at all. I'd say I'm pretty quick. Um, I'm feisty, I guess, I don't know. So there you go, Sonic. Awesome, I love that answer. Sonic's personally the character I suck with the most. So I'm very happy <laughs> that you're, you're good with Sonic. Um, what are some of your like guilty pleasures per se, like like TV shows, music that a lot of your friends and close people don't actually know you like? And if they did know you like, they'd be like, really? Um, let's see. I mean, I'll pretty much watch anything on Netflix. Like, um, I'm trying to think of like a show that or a movie that most people wouldn't like. Or, I mean, um, I used to watch. So growing up, I used to watch. Uh, I think it's Pretty Little Liars. The one where they have like X that like uh, is the one trying to get out, get at him or whatever. But I used to watch that all the time, like every single night from from getting home from school. I would just watch Pretty Little Liars. I was I, I never found out who X was. So if you're out there, DM me and tell me who X was because I or whatever the letter is. I, I, I don't know who it is. I, I, I couldn't finish the, sh the series, but uh, but that would probably be the one that people would be like, wow. People out there that are watching this. DM Tanner the answer. We we he just got to have it, right? Yes, yes. Anyways, so outside of soccer, you have the Chum Chat podcast, and I want to know how you got into podcasting, what motivated you, who you do it with, and whatnot. Right. So um, I do it with my co-host John Gomez. It used to be John and Judson Burns, but he's kind of doing his own thing now. So at the moment, it's me and John Gomez plays in Portugal for Porto B. And um, we started, it was just us three in a group chat because we all played at FC Dallas Academy. Um, we're all good friends and we kind of had a trip for playoffs. And that was when we really bonded together. We were in the same room and I mean, we were doing everything together. And then we, after playoffs, that was the last time we were ever going to play together. So we started a group chat and, um, you know, stay in touch or whatever. And then uh, someone, I changed the name to Chums because Chums is like a group of friends. And then um, one day we were just talking and uh, I think John was like, we should just start a podcast or something like we're, we're funny. Like we, we intermix with pretty funny and, and we were like, all right, bet let's start a podcast. And then it was, you know, what do we call it? All right, chum chat, boom. So then we started the podcast and then, you know, we were doing it on, I like to say this, we were doing it on Zoom before Zoom got big. Like we, you know, we kind of put Zoom out there, not gonna like take credit, but Zoom, if you're watching, like you're welcome. And um, so we, we kind of started doing it and and we kind of got better and better. And we, we you know, we know some people that would be on, you know, a bunch of pros, Brandon Cervania was our first guest. So, uh, you know, it was just a matter of getting them on, uh, having a good time, but it was, it was, uh, it was at the beginning, it was more of just like something fun to do, something cool to stay in touch. And then we kind of built, uh, 
this kind of motto, find your success. Um, and we, we started doing merch and everything. So it's kind of just grown from that. But uh, we definitely have goals and ambitions and, and uh, trying to reach different things. But no, it's, it's been really fun. Where, where do you see the Chum Chat podcast going? Like, what do you think the height is for it? Um, I mean, there's definitely a ceiling. Uh, it's like a sports podcast, so not everyone listens to sports podcasts. But um, I mean, I think it would be uh, really cool just to have. I mean, for me, it's not about how many people listen or how many people, you know, whatever. To me, it's just getting to know people that come on and uh, making more connections through that. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I really think there is a ceiling because it's a sports podcast. But um, at the end of the day, if if we get the right people on, find your success can can relate to all things. So. Do you have any like funny stories of a past guest on the show? We had Dante Seeley on, uh, homegrown. Uh, we had two episodes with him. The first episode we were trying to, so Dante's a real childish guy, like real funny, like always joking. So you never take him serious. So I was already like speculating before, like, Hey, I don't know if we could get Dante on. Like it might just be wait, like he won't take any of the questions serious. So we were kind of joking around and we had told him like, Hey, look, we're gonna joke around a little bit, but then, you know, we gotta get serious. Like we gotta ask some questions that, you know, the people wanna listen to, uh, to get to know you better, like actually understand. And the first question I asked him, I was like, yo, like uh, we had just been joking and stuff. And I was like, so what was it like uh, to be in North Texas and then uh, just sign homegrown and then you get put down with North Texas and, and you're going up and down, uh, you make a roster for the first team and you're back with North Texas. Then they have you play with the Academy. What's that roller coaster like basically? And I was just trying to get, you know, like a response of how he made it through that. And he was like, so, uh, you know, and then we all just started dying laughing. Like it was <laughs> hilarious. And, uh, so then, you know, after we regrouped, I said the same thing, the same question, I repeated the whole thing. And then he was like, uh, you know, uh, he was like, the roller coaster ride has been uh, really tough. And after that, it was like, we couldn't take anything serious. So we had to, we had to scratch that episode. It was just like a jokes or episode kind of. And then the second one, we really, really had to focus to get uh, some serious questions in. Going back to the soccer stuff, or maybe even with the podcast stuff, like what are you trying to accomplish in 2021, either with Dallas national team or just your own personal stuff? Well, I guess we'll, uh, the Olympics is coming up. I want to be on that group to qualify for the Olympics. That's the, that's number one. You got to qualify. And then hopefully, uh, you know, I want to be a part of that Olympic group if, if it goes, but we're focusing on qualifying first and hopefully I can be a part of that group. And then, um, uh, with Dallas, uh, I want to get minutes. I want to be uh, a big factor. I want to get some goals. I got to score my first goal this year. I can't be not scoring. Uh, I want to get some assists, help out the team. However I can. And, uh, the goal there is to, to win an MLS cup, uh, to win, uh, the first MLS Cup for FC Dallas would be huge. And then um, I guess with Chum Chat, you know, we're just going to continue to grow, uh, continue doing our thing. We, we recently signed with a podcast company, Believe. So we're uh, we're just working our way up, uh, not trying to take major steps. We're just going to keep being consistent, uh, growing, having fun with that. And then with the men's national team, um, any opportunities I get, uh, I'm not really totally focused on that. Like I got to go with the men's national team. It's more, you know, focus on Dallas, focus on the opportunities in front of me and uh, good things will happen. But definitely if I get called up with that group, whether it's Gold Cup, Nations League, or just a friendly or whatever, you know, I'm gonna do my best and, and compete and, and try to earn a spot there, so. Um, anyways, thank you so much for joining me. I'd like to give you the opportunity to shout anyone out, shout out your socials, where they could find um, your podcast and all of that. Yeah, uh, follow me on Instagram, frantanjam 5 That's on all my platforms, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. And then, um, go follow chum.chat on Instagram. And then uh, I don't know what it is for Twitter. It might be just chum chat. I'm not sure. And then you can check us out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. We're the whole deal. And then um, shop chumchat.com. You got to go get your merch. Uh, it's it's getting summertime. So you might need to get some t-shirts. We still have hoodies available. I don't know if you need a hoodie though. If you live up north, get a hoodie. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all I'll do. And then uh, I, I started a GoFundMe if you want to donate to uh, the winter storm relief. Uh, you could go do that and help out in the community. So that's it. Anyway, that is gonna wrap up the very first episode of the This Week in MLS show. I forgot to mention earlier, but if you got to this point, like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is much appreciated. Help this show and channel grow. Like my Instagram. Anyways, Jerry. Thank you so much for coming on. Tanner, thank you so much for coming on as well. It was so incredible to get you to dab on my show. But Jerry, before I let you yeah. go, where can everyone see you or find you? Uh, I mean, they can see me right now, but they can find me on all socials at JR4YNOSO, Jay Reynoso, on all social media. And then, of course, 
subscribe to One Ten Football on YouTube, man. I mean, at One Ten Football TV on all socials. Los Angeles Saga as well. Go follow us. That's my media group. I help kids across the country kickstart their journalism careers. And I have mentors mentoring them, etc. We're gonna have a big season this year for everybody over at One Ten Football on MLS. This week in MLS, the greatest MLS show here. Let's get it. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Red shade is the code. Red shade.